Welcome to this special episode of NTB Dialogues, a special CNS series presenting insightful and thought-provoking interviews with those who have spent years in fighting the world's top infectious killer disease, tuberculosis, to accelerate progress towards ending it. Today, we will be in conversation with public health specialist, Dr. Bornali Datta, who is director, Department of Respiratory and Sleep Medicine and project lead of Mission TB Free Haryana at Medanta the Medicity, one of India's largest multi super speciality institutes located in Gurgaon. She is also honorary research consultant at University College of London. Welcome, Dr. Datta. We are indeed very fortunate and proud to have you with us in our show today. Thank you. Bornali, we know that finding all TB is the first vital step if we are to end this disease. But we have been missing TB cases, not only among those who take a TB test, and unfortunately still a majority are getting a microscopic test, but also among those who are unreached. Can you please share your insights and reflections on this? Hmm, absolutely. So I think that is, uh, you know, at the crux of the TB, TB epidemic that we are dealing with. And so th there are so many levels of, uh, you know, missing patients. Uh, what the prevalence survey told us, the first level of missing patients is that 30 to 40 percent of the patients are asymptomatic. So, you know, they don't even know they have it. So, you know, that straight away uh, we, are, uh, we have a problem because we only all our algorithms only start with symptoms and then we move on to diagnostics. That's the first thing. Uh, second thing is that uh, they come to us, they do, uh, you know, reach us and then we fail them because our diagnostics are simply not good enough. And as you rightly say, microscopy uh, has had been the cornerstone a decade ago, but right now it should be replaced by far superior and point of care diagnostics like molecular diagnostics. However, again, the TB report tells us that 22% of the designated microscopy centers, still uh, only 22% have molecular diagnostics. So 78% still function on microscopy. So yes, we still have a long way to go because still we replace everything. And obviously it can't be done overnight. We know that because the cost implications are huge. But nonetheless, in a staged manner, we have to do it if we are talking about elimination. And that finally, the very key thing of the unreached. And unreached is, of course, uh, you know, 68% of our population is in the rural areas. And while the primary health care facilities, you know, uh, TB, the NTEP is the largest national program, and it has a huge network, a web of uh, DMCs, PHCs, which all cater to TB, but it's still not enough. And it still doesn't go the last mile and reach the patient who is really far out. The second group that we don't reach are the urban urban poor, the, the urban, you know, the homeless, the ones in the slums, the ones who don't have IDs, who are not registered, who cannot be tracked, who are migrant, etc. So those are another very key category uh, who are often described as, you know, being the engine house of transmission because they are vulnerable, uh, they, they are daily wage earners, they are exposed to, um, you know, so much of infection and they can they have the ability to spread it in the community. So these, I think, are the various aspects of uh, not being able to, uh, or the, of the missing cases, rather. Yes, and um, very rightly, you have pointed not only uh, to the rural areas, but also the homeless and those people in living sums in, in cities like uh, Delhi and other metro cities as well. Uh, because... Uh, uh, Bernali, it was just last week when we went to speak to a homeless person in a shelter home uh, near Loknaik Jay Prakash Hospital. And there, from him, we learned of the Medanta van offering screening and testing in Ramlila Medan. Uh, in, in 2018, at the India versus TB summit, you had shared with CNS about Medanta vans that were reaching the unreached back then. Uh, yes. I think under the a TB free mission. Correct. So, correct. can you share more about this lab on wheels initiative? 
So you're absolutely right. When we when TB Free Haryana was launched in uh, Mission TB Free Haryana, now we call it Mission TB Free or Mission TB Free India because we're in multiple sites now. But when we launched it in 2015, the focus was, was on Haryana in the rural districts of Haryana. You know, again, as we discussed, where access was a problem and uh, x-rays were virtually non-existent in PHCs and CHCs, functional x-rays. So our van would carry a digital x-ray and then we would reach the, uh, you know, the, the respective district. Uh, in 2019, we started working with a group uh, called Center for Equity Studies, who are now um, who are now part of the Public Health Resource Network, and they were doing some excellent work with uh, homeless people in the Yamuna Pushta area, uh, single homeless men, and they also ran what was called a recovery shelter. Now there are uh, my understanding from interaction with this group who are doing such good work is that there are two hundred shelters in Delhi. But two of them only are recovery shelters, one for men and one for women. And the recovery shelter basically means uh, um, a medical center, a medical facility where they are taking in the people who need treatment, who are given nutrition, medicines, etc. And uh, when they started this work, they realized there were two major problems that these uh, you know, people faced. One was trauma because they did all heavy labor and uh, you know uh, fractures and things were common and the second was tuberculosis so that's when they got really you know intensive work on tuberculosis and we were introduced by in fact a common partner university college of london and we started sending our mobile van with the digital x-ray for there and over there we were doing mass radiology we just screened everyone with x-ray because these were what we now call the key affected population and you know they there was no need to symptom screen for them we just do x-rays for everyone and uh, we picked up a staggering rate of 6% positivity so after doing the x-ray the sputum sample goes to the tb center in loknayak hospital and um, we got out of i think 1200 screened we got some 69 positive on gene expert at that time so it was a six percent positivity which is the highest seen in any cohort in the world so certainly that has a lot of merit and i'd be very happy to share some pictures from you as and uh, for you as and when okay uh, now currently uh, what equipment do these vans carry just uh, so, for the benefit yeah, of our listeners, yes. Absolutely. So we started, again, I have it all in a pictorial yes. format. We started in 2015 with a digital x-ray. Uh, in 2018, we added a portable gene expert, which was called Expert Edge at that time. It was a single module, so not very efficient, but it worked very well for the rural areas, but not so efficient for the urban, where the pickup was much higher, and that's why we started taking our samples to uh, Loknayak Hospital TB Center. Uh, then in 2022, we had AI. We had Cure AI, our own homegrown Indian uh, AI. And just in 2024, we launched our Ultra Portable. And so we have kept up with the technological changes. And really, right now, these big vans are no longer needed. You know, you can just sit in a car, carry one portable, Ultra Portable X-ray, one portable um, molecular diagnostic, whether it is a TrueNAT or um, Expert or MyLab. You know, there's so many very options now. And just reach your point of uh, concern and just do a, you know, so-called camp there. And, you know, you can uh, uh, do point of care, uh, not just testing, but diagnostic uh, confirmation and treatment. Uh, so right now, uh, you are just, uh, the samples are being taken to Loknayak Hospital or you are testing there in the... No, in at the moment we had, so see how it has, we had a very big meeting in March mm -hmm. uh, for World TB uh, Day. And, mm -hmm. and basically we have this van which just does digital x-ray and the okay. confirmatory molecular diagnostic is done by Loknayak. But now okay. the plan is to have uh, one of, you know, Mole Bios, in fact, one of their uh, ultra portable mm -hmm. x-ray mm -hmm. as well as a, a true not machine installed in the large recovery shelter of 200 people and that will become a diagnostic center which will not only look after the people admitted in the recovery shelter but all the homeless people who live in the vicinity which is you know in the hundreds and then we can draw in from all the you know the homeless people around that area and this will serve as a diagnostic center so yes then we will shift the all entire diagnostics uh, to be okay. with it yes and how many such vans are there now and again since you're talking of uh, the future escalation and uh, also 
uh, spreading uh, if there it is on your cards uh, to have this in other states as well absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely so we have six vans uh, right now based in uh, medanta gurgaon of which five vans uh, are in haryana one van is in delhi okay. uh, we have already started a project in lucknow uh so that started uh, last year october october 23 so we had a big launch with the principal secretary and uh, that is now doing urban lucknow but the plan is again to scale it uh, the other two places we already have a van in ranchi and we are planning to send a van to patna and indore and essentially wherever there is a medanta we hope to have a van and roll out the tv program in the similar format that we've done in haryana and delhi okay that is great because i come from lucknow so it's great to hear that <laughs> that you <laughs> yes excellent uh, uh, burnali what has been the public health impact uh, in terms of screening um, you have mentioned some of it but uh, screening uh, testing linkage to care uh, start Absolutely. of treatment and uh, uh, navigating the treatment pathway absolutely so th so that's a great question and and you know we have evolved so much as a program as well because we started we've always worked very closely with government which is the only way to do it because their systems already in place and all we are doing is just augmenting or filling some gap that may exist but working closely with them in haryana at least over the last uh, you know so many uh, years we've just uh, this is the 10th year that we are doing uh, mission tv free haryana and we have uh screened uh, close to 50000 people diagnosed um uh, you know 6 6500 around that yes. much seen them through with treatment now the the thing to point out is that in the um in 2022 we launched a, a cluster randomized control trial is what we you know call it and in this um essentially our uh, we are doing it in a much more systematic manner uh, where we are doing it's a trial it's a cluster trial so we are doing the sub centers where we are intervening with our van and molecular diagnostics etc and there are control centers where we are not so in that we have had some excellent results that um uh, we have tripled case notification rate so that is the public health impact of our work of tripling case notification rates where we have intervened and we have now uh, recruited community health workers who also uh apart from doing door to door active case finding with the asha workers they also do um telephonic dots so because video dots was our goal but rural areas it didn't work out they were not very keen on video dots so uh we uh did it with telephone so just do a simple telephone call and find out whether they have uh, managed or not so that is how we have kind of you know uh, okay. taken it a little more on that uh... is it helping reduce diagnostic delays uh, costs involved uh, you know for these patients to navigate that entire health system i because yeah. uh, we spoke to many and even before like there was a person again in delhi uh, he was he suffered for more than 3 months with tb symptoms went to the med, uh, to the health system to whichever doctors he could see and uh, he was uh, like he, he later on says that uh, i got uh, so many tests done but nobody asked me to get my sputum checked and yeah. before right. he could actually get the tb test already a lot of delay had taken place yeah, uh, yeah. so the, the and the cost involved he got treated for typhoid nothing helped and and his symptoms are very classical symptoms of tuberculosis absolutely, absolutely yeah so reducing so also reducing diagnostic delays and re reducing the time between diagnosis and treatment uh, in initiation at least absolutely. in in this case yeah. Yeah, absolutely so so see the one thing we definitely do is reduce diagnostic delay because mm -hmm. we have point of care testing so we test diagnose confirmed within that you know camp that we do uh, at the most it may spill over to the next day but the patients are still uh, you know the attrition is not happened they are still very much engaged and we do uh, certainly in delhi we working with ndtb center with dr kk chopra he gives the first 
uh, dose on the day of diagnosis. So then you have captured the patient. He's in the system, you've started the treatment, and there's no way that there's going to be delay. In Haryana as well, we were very keen to do that, to give the dose as soon as diagnosis happens. And even though we've not achieved that, but this patients get definitely started on treatment. So I think the simple thing of having a mobile unit or a sort of a portable system is that you are reaching their doorstep. You know, yes. you're not expecting the patient to come miles uh, from, you know, wherever they live. And especially in rural areas, the distances are vast. We have seen for ourselves and expecting a patient where, you know, the mobility, especially for women, you know, women, they don't have a conveyance. They don't have a way to reach you. So in the rural areas, especially we found reaching the doorstep really works because in the last trial that we are doing, the, of the patients who attended, 52% are women. And that is the advantage of taking a, you know, diagnostic unit to the subcenter or to the village because the patients have to walk a very short distance, and therefore you're not, you know, uh, losing out on that. Yes, that that that's a very important point you have made. That is very very important. Like uh, re going to the people, taking taking the lab to the people, or taking the tests and treatment to the people, rather than that is the only way to find them. That's the only way Absolutely. to find them because actually we are missing them. They are not. They are not missing themselves. We are missing them. To absolutely to right. And yeah. once we say elimination, we can't be sitting back. You know, yes. A, yes. we are wanting to eliminate. Then you have to door to door is the only way. You have to land up at their doorstep. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Is uh, uh, screening and testing for other health conditions also in the offing? I know that it's at all uh, ask right yeah. now. You are yeah. concentrating on TB, but with these mobile vans, maybe. Uh, little more emphasis on so many various other diseases is uh, absolutely yes. dr shoba I, I fully agree that you know if we have the platform you know why restrict yes. to one disease let's do yes. as much as we can and certainly in the rural areas one of the things you know a lot of focus on integrated healthcare these days and uh, so we are looking at uh, expanding from TB with TB and COPD, you know, because my experiences from the x-rays is that whoever doesn't have TB has COPD, you know, the cough is then COPD. So uh, yes, you're right. That is one of the things in the urban areas, the problems are very different. So the plan is to go ahead with uh, testing for again, very commonly existing things amongst these excluded populations, uh, like the homeless people, IV drug users, sex workers, uh, prisoners, etc., to do not only TB screening, but also screen for the hepatitis, hepatitis B, C, yes. HIV. You know, these are, again, uh, very important things which are treatable. You know, we have so, such good treatment nowadays. So, yes, that's a very pertinent point, And the plan is to expand uh, as per the population demand and need. All right. Uh, uh, one more thing I would like you to uh, talk a little bit about is uh, you said uh, that, yes, uh, it's the same, almost the same day treatment and uh, uh, reducing that, those delays. Yeah. But uh, I had given you that example of that person uh, who took, uh, means basically three months before he was advised uh, a TB test. And then there has been, I read a recent study by Dr. Sushmita Chatterjee, which shows that diagnostic delays average 12 weeks for drug sensitive TB and 14 weeks for uh, DRTB, drug resistant TB. And uh, offering molecular testing upfront is very important, but eliminating these diagnostic delays again are a field where we need uh, to put our attention to if we are to uh, stop the spread of infection. So, your sites and uh, insights and uh, reflections on yeah. this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think diagnostic delays. Uh, so, so again, I suppose a lot depends on the, uh, you know, which part, where, urban, rural, how good mm -hmm. the healthcare provision is in that mm -hmm. area. But also uh, bear in mind that the first point of contact for every individual is not a, a, a hospital or a, you know, clinic. They'll go to their local doctor. And again, it's your, you know, good or bad luck. Uh, how the level of you know competence of that doctor because in the rural area certainly there is a lot of rural practitioners you know who still uh, will not 
follow the exact guidelines as we know and as the government uh, you know would like us to follow so i think there is a lot of that i think awareness not not only amongst the patients amongst the general lay people but also amongst practitioners has to be increased you know they have to understand that a person who is coughing and nowadays as we know not even the symptomatic the asymptomatic as well we have to keep a very high index of suspicion because we are endemic we have 27 percent of the world's burden of tb and therefore you know it our radar should be like really focused on detecting it so i think awareness a lot more uh, a lot is being done by the government yes. we have mr bachchan as our you know the brand ambassador for tb uh, elimination etc but maybe a lot more needs to be done to make people aware and the, the provision is there the patient just may not know how to access it yes. so you know making them aware there are plans for an app so that a per person just has to yes. tap it on his phone and he will know exactly where to go so i think there's a lot that can be done yes it is yes, not acceptable to have a three month diagnostic delay in this day and age yes and and in a place like delhi also it's place like, like delhi. Yes, Absolutely. in a place in Absolutely. a in a metro city uh, Bernali, you were showing us, uh, going to show us some pictures or some slides you wanted to sure. share. So please, yes, please. Uh, very gladly. So I'll just go. I'll just uh, do a pictorial yes. things over the last yes. ten years. So this is yes. what we started with our first van. It was a van given by Siemens, and okay. um, and Dr. Trehan, as you know, wow. is uh, you know he is such a you know driven and motivating right. leader. And this is this is the first van he got us, uh, which had mammogram and other things, and we affixed an X-ray and started this. Uh, so this is in Rivari 2015. So this was the first technological procurement that we had, uh, digital. This is just a simple portable X-ray machine from Allinger's, which is an indigenous uh, company. And uh, then we had the digital uh, set up already there of Fuji. And this was the X-ray that we could see then and there. And this made a huge difference to our entire thing. 2018, this was our gene expert, Edge, uh, that came on board. And again, that made our program very meaningful because of the uh, 10 suspected TB patients from the x-rays of that day. We could do the gene expert, you know, on the on the day and confirm the diagnosis. And then QRAI 2022, and this is just a picture of what we get from AI, how they highlight the, uh, you know, the, the areas of concern. And uh, we can see that the left lung here is quite uh, damaged with, you know, fibrotic lesions or infiltrates consolidation, maybe a thick walled cavity forming. And this, they'll give us a score. And the score in this case, I think, is uh, 0.98. So 98% probability of um, having tuberculosis. And, and these are the partnerships. These are the six big vans we have right now. And the partnerships have been from other corporate partners. And we are really grateful for this association. Rights has given us four vans. Krishna Maruti has given us two vans. In fact, we have seven now because they just gave us a second van in on World TV Day. Hero Motocorp in the future are going to give us two systems. RJ Corp has given us, Siemens and Philips, they had given us earlier vans which have one of them has gone to uh, Lucknow now and one has gone to uh, but, uh, Ranchi, sorry. So this is uh, how this, uh, you know, the vans work. And this is our very latest acquisition of the uh, ultra portable. And we trialed this in Karnal and we have started work on this. We'll have one in uh, Delhi and one in uh, Haryana. And we'll see how this works. The government of Haryana itself has given one ultra portable to every district, all 22 districts. So I think in the sense of technology, we are making huge strides in diagnostic and we must, um, you know, we must utilize what we have because uh, taking this to the, this is just an empty village plot on which we put it up and we had a big camp there because all that entire village, everybody could just walk over and get their x-ray done if they had concerns. And so this is what uh, we have downsized to from having these big yeah. uh, vans, which are actually quite expensive. They take almost 60 to 70 lakhs in um, um, making them having a lead lined uh, chamber where the x-ray takes place. Then we came down to a, a ambulance size. Then now we have a car which carries the ultra portable, both the x-ray machine as well as the molecular diagnostic. And as we know, this can even be done on the back of a bike. But this I wouldn't recommend for long distances, maybe just short distances if we need to go in a very safe manner, because obviously the equipment, the ultra portable x-ray is still a very expensive equipment. And uh, you know we have to handle it with a great deal of care. 
Um, so in Haryana, just uh, briefly, this has been our expansion from starting with the pilot in one district in 2015, 14, 15. We've now covered the entire state of Haryana sequentially many times over different districts. Mm -hmm. And this is one of our programs for adopt a district where we tied up with numerous uh, uh, corporates and encouraged them to take up a district where we would then assist uh, with case diagnosis, help the government. And this is the uh, cluster randomized control trial that I talked about in Karnal. And the blue, this is the sub-center. And the red is intervention, blue is control. And this is where door-to-door -door with the ASHA workers. And I think this is the way forward. Uh, however labor-intensive and cost-intensive it may be, but this is worth doing if we want elimination. And this is the results that we had uh, where we covered... Uh, 3.5 lakh individuals, 3.4 lakh individuals, and we there were 238 were positive, 14% out of this you know cascade, and some more clinically diagnosed, 244 dots, and then we even did contact tracing, and uh, as we we talked about, we did telephonic dots, and we had much more women, 52% women, because we because the distance for 88% was within a kilometer. So these are very important things from the rural perspective, where distances are huge. And we tripled case notification. As you can see, there's the intervention area. And then Delhi. Now, Delhi, these, it's, I think collaboration is the way forward. As we know, we have the government at the very center of it. And then the other partners must join in as best possible. Civil society partners, we have, we are now working with another group called Humana. CES is uh, not there now. We have PHRN. They are experts in their, uh, you know, in knowing uh, what happens to the people on the street you know, who are so vulnerable, uh, the key affected population. We offer our diagnostic facilities. Uh, University College of London has given us technical expertise and advice. Then TB Association of India, Diagnostics, Medicine, Delivery, and of course the state NTEP, both NDTB Center and Lok Nayak Hospital. Uh, so the doctor referral and follow-up. And so this is where Madanta fits in with the diagnosis of chest X-ray. And so you can see how vital it is to have all the partners because active case finding is done by these groups and the recovery shelters, you know, for the homeless people, they are taken in there, they're given three square meals and their medication and kept till the treatment is completed. So there's a, uh, there's a huge need to scale this especially because we may diagnose as much as we want, but till we have ensured that they are cured, we are not going to have any impact on the disease on the incidents. So this is Yamuna Pushta. This is the area uh, just on the banks where we uh, you know, deal with, we, we have the camps, our van goes and looks after, uh, does the screening for homeless people. So this is one of the uh, places. Then this is a shelter in Bangla Sahib complex where we recently uh, did a camp. These blue ones are all the shelters. This is with the Humana team and that's our van over there. And then we have in Old Delhi, in Old Delhi, again, that's a key area. We work in the clinical, in the clinic in Pili Koti and done a huge number of camps over there. And, uh, and so you can see that, you know, there's a huge benefit to be getting a mobile system there. And when we uh, station these ultra portable and move from one shelter to another, again, I can see that having such a tremendous benefit to the population that live in that area who have, uh, you know, who are really very vulnerable, key affected, and they need all the kind of help and all the assistance we can give to picking up. And as you rightly pointed out, not just TB, but all the other illnesses, because these are all, uh, you know, they're all linked at the end of the day. You know, if someone has TB, there's a strong possibility of them also having, you know, any of these uh, bloodborne viruses. So that's something that we have to keep a lookout for. So this is uh, what is key nowadays in the in every setting, but especially in the urban setting for this kind of key affected population is what we now refer as a differentiated care model because everybody needs a different level of care. So there will be uh, those. So we start off, we do mass radiology and then expert and now we have expert, true, not, et cetera, positive, negative, the microbiologically diagnosed and clinically diagnosed. Now, there are two forms. Residential treatment is in the recovery shelter. And those can, there are also, they can be healthcare workers who carry out community-based treatment. So th this is a model that we are developing going forward. And in our screening in Delhi, as I told you, we had a staggering level of 5.4% in the first round of screening, the 9.4% when we combined it with clinically diagnosed. And currently what is ongoing, we have a 6.8% um, prevalence rate, pickup rate. So this is a huge in this cohort and this cohort 
has to be looked after that the you know diagnosis treatment everything has to be looked after and this is what we launched you can see dr trahan here dr guleria dr jaiswal myself and the whole medanta team when we launched our uh, you know bike with the uh, molbio ultra portable x ray we have union representative we have someone from hero motor corp who have who are funding the bike and the um, ultra portable x ray and and this is the future really that we take the diagnostics to the doorstep of the patient and um, you know i think we have a great hopes of what we can achieve going forward i think that is my last uh, picture uh, so this is the plan for delhi as i told you in the recovery shelter will station an ultra portable x-ray and true not and uh, this will become a medical facility for the homeless population in the vicinity both those living in the shelter and those outside Yes, yes. Thank you very much, and great work you are doing. And as it is, it's it will be our combined efforts of all of us if we want to end TB and Absolutely. reach the unreached. And uh, uh, great experience speaking with you, Doctor, uh, and your journey, and taking us through this journey, and what is happening, and what is doable, and everything is doable when you have the will and the spirit to do. So, Absolutely right. Well, thank so, you very much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Dr. Shobha. Thank you, uh, Bobby and CNS. Uh, and thank you very much, Bornali. Friends, we were listening to Dr. Bornali Datta, Director, Department of Respiratory and Sleep Medicine and Project Lead, Mission TB Free Haryana, which has now actually become Mission TB Free India at Medanta Medicity Hospital of Gurgaon, India. Thank you very much. Till we meet again. Thank, thank you. you.